I am outside of the Milwaukee Art Museum. I'm gonna do a little video on filters for black and white photography. Um, there are a couple different filters that I use all the time. Uh, one is a yellow, another's an orange, and then the third one would be a red. Now I use a yellow filter, an orange filter, and a red filter quite often in my photography. And it really depends on what I'm trying to do. But the basic idea is they block uh, different levels of blue lights. So a yellow is gonna block a little bit of blue light, an orange is gonna block a little bit more, and a red is gonna block even more. And that not only like really cuts down blue in the skies, but there's a lot of blue in shadows as well. So it's really gonna, it just, it adds more contrast to the scene basically by cutting those uh, levels of blue light in the shadows and in skies and things like that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just take the same shot here. We got a beautiful day, blue skies, white puffy clouds, and I want to shoot this against, and I, I kind of picked this building just because the, well, for one, the architecture is, so, is really, really cool. And for two, it's white. It will give us a good gauge at how much this is actually blocking from the yellow to the orange to the red. So I'm just gonna do a comparison, same shot, yellow, orange, red, develop the negatives, scan them, and we'll take a look. I'm using uh, B and W filters, B plus W filters. And on a side note, I use a, a 77 millimeter, an adapter ring to the bayonet and I just absolutely love it because even if I'm using like an ND filter on it, I can just pop it off if I need to be able to see a little bit better and it really, really helps. So I love that about these Hasselblad lenses. Um, it has like a bayonet style mount, so it just, you know, it's one twist. So it's a little easier than having to thread on and off for sure. So I do love that, but we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with the yellow filter. And the sun's kind of going in and out um, between the clouds, but I'm going to try to make these as similar as I can. So the yellow filter does kick the meter down exactly one stop. So I'm just gonna meter through the filters and keep it consistent. A lot of times when I'm just walking around shooting pictures with the camera, I like to just meter through the filters anyway. It keeps it really simple. And you know, the less hassle, the better. So I think I'm gonna actually shoot this at F22 at 250th of a second. And so on the lens here, there's a depth of field preview. And, and like I said, about the bayonet filter, I really like it because I can see better if I stop it down. And yeah, it looks like everything should be pretty good. And then I can just pop this back on without having to, to mess with anything. So, so I'm really just kind of waiting on that sun to come out. Cause like I said, I would like that uh, building to be lit in full sun to really make those whites intense. Really, dude? I'm waiting on some guy who is smoking a cigarette on the side of the hill in my picture. Always something. Can't take that long to smoke a cigarette, right? So we'll just patiently wait. Oh, that sun is so good right now. So one of the things that cutting the blue light does is there's a lot of blue light in shadows. So it also increases contrast that way too. So that's why you usually have to compensate. Um, the filters I have for my yellow filter, I usually give it about an extra stop. For my orange filter, I give it a stop and a half. For my red filter, about two stops. The other thing I'm gonna do is I also have a green filter and because of this green grass and stuff in the foreground, I just wanna see what that does as well. So we'll compare all four of those filters with the same exact, with the same exact shot. Longest cigarette ever. But I do think this is kind of the perfect scenario because um, it's this, this white, white stark building um, on a, a very blue sky. You know, there's a very blue sky today. So that should give us a really good comparison of, of how much blue light these different filters are blocking. And he's done. First frame. Come on, sun. Come on, sun. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I don't want that cloud to move. Man, photography's frustrating. All right, so every time the sun comes out, somebody walks across here. 
And then when they're done, it gets cloudy. Wedding pictures. All right, here. Come on, son. Stay out. Here we go. Here we go. First shot. I can't believe I got it off. I didn't think it was ever gonna happen. All right, now we're gonna take the orange filter. Like I said, this is a 77, this is a 77 mil millimeter adapter for the bayonet style Hasselblad filters. And I had all these 77 millimeter filters from my old Mamiya, which those, I think all those lenses were 77 millimeters. So I've had these filters for a long, quite a long time. Um, this one's actually a Hoya, but the other ones I have are B, B plus W and they're really good uh, multi-coated filters. So now I'm gonna open up a half stop, uh, F16 and a half at 250th of a second with the orange filter. But I kinda gotta wait till it's sunny out again to actually make that judgment call. But normally if I was spot metering, I would give the orange one like roughly a stop and a half. It's telling me two stops, but the, the sun's kind of going in and out of the clouds. So I got to kind of wait till it, it gets sunny again, which means someone will be walking across the frame for sure. It's just how it goes. Pretty sure it'll be time for another cigarette break when the sun comes out. All right, here we go. I got two done. Now we shall go to the red filter. Quickly, quickly, before the sun goes away. So this is roughly two stops from what my first meter was. So the yellow I shot at 125th at F22. The orange I shot at F16 and a half. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's still telling me 15. Take the shot. Oh, dude, go away. Walk away, man. No! Waiting, waiting, waiting. So with the yellow, yellow filter, I shot it at 125th of a second at F22. With the orange one, I shot 125th of a second at F16 and a half. And now with the red filter, I'm gonna shoot it at a 60th of a second at F22 again. So it's one stop, one and a half stops, two stops. And then the green one, I have a filter factor of, or I have it, I have it written down as two stops for my green filter. I don't use this filter much. We're gonna give it a shot today. I wanna see what the green filter can do, or if the green filter does anything. Pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to feel this leg by the time I'm done here. Here's the sun. All right, here we go. One more on the green and we should be done. I don't know if I've, well, I've probably shot many times with multiple filters. I don't know if I've ever just shot the same exact frame. So this should be, uh, this should be interesting for me too. I just always assume, you know, if I want a dark, dark, if I want skies to go, you know, really make the clouds pop, so I always, you know, I'll throw on a red if I really want that drama. Um, but I've had it kind of backfire on me too. So um, this should be good to see what actually happens here. So now we're back at meters reading at 17. Now it's at 15. So yeah, that was a two stops difference. Keep it at 15, the same as the red. Oh, this looks crazy through here. And we'll just shoot it. There we go. I did take a couple, I've, I've kind of been walking around taking shots of the building. Um, the clouds were a little bit like wispier and it was overcast earlier and now it's just like full sun. So I think I got some really cool shots earlier too. So I'm really excited to develop this film. I'm on frame nine. So I might, the, the sky's kind of like coming across. I'm just gonna throw, I only have a couple ND filters, but I'm just gonna throw, maybe we'll go red. 
then ND and just give it a long exposure and see what, and I'll just do a couple long exposures for the last three and see what happens. But let me take note on this first. So six was green. Okay, so that should be the order I shot those in. Now I will put the red back on and I'll just stack whatever NDs I have. I probably only have enough to get it down to like maybe four seconds, eight seconds. Just cause it's a uh, HP5. I'm shooting HP5 at 400, by the way. Usually in bright sunny conditions, I mean, there's nothing too crazy with the shadows going on. That's usually where, around where I'll shoot it at. If I'm really, if I'm trying to get out a little bit more shadow detail, I'll raise it a bit. But in this case, I'm really focused on the highlight in the sky. So I'm just gonna let it ride. I can't feel my foot. Oh, ow. Oh my goodness, where are my NDs? Where are my NDs at? All right, so these I am gonna have to calculate. So I will just start with my base exposure, which was 60th of a second at F22. I can stop it down to F32 if I want to. I wanted depth of field, but I really didn't, you know, if the grass is in focus, I'm not gonna cry if it's not. So I just focused at infinity. I started backing it off a little, but again, this is kind of an experiment and I'm really focusing just on the building and kind of expecting this foreground stuff to go a little bit dark or to just burn it down and make the building pop. So I have a 0.9 and a 1.5. God, I hate math. So that is three stops. This is five stops, so that's eight stops, right? 1.5, I think so. So we're at 60th. One, two, three, four, five, six. It'd be one second, two seconds, four seconds. So we will be four seconds. And I have this little recipro, recipro, recipro. I have the, the failure, the failure chart here. The reciprocity failure chart. So if I have to give it four seconds, it's telling me eight seconds, plus it will increase the contrast by about a stop. You know, I can, I can worry about that in the printing and the scanning stage, I guess. I'm, like, I'm gonna develop it as normal. But we will give it eight seconds. And this is where this really comes in handy because I can't see anything through here right now. Now, if I just pop that off, the whole stack, probably not a good idea to stack three filters, but hey, we're gonna do it. And now I'll be able to get those clouds just kind of like moseying by. So I'll put it in bulb. And actually we'll go to eight seconds at F32 in bulb. And then eight seconds, it's telling me 19 seconds. And I'm just gonna count, so. I actually gave it 30 seconds simply because the clouds went, it, the sun went behind the clouds for a little bit. Um, we're gonna go ahead, get this developed, and we'll take a look at it. So I'm gonna walk around, see if I can get a couple more cool images of this building. And that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Um, so we'll see you next time.